Uh, so in this week's lab, so we are going to learn how to use, uh, how to create a simple linear regression model uh, in right manner. So one uh, simple linear regression model is is a pretty simple model, but we want to use this one as a example that see that how we can uh, create model in right manner and also how we can evaluate the data, the accuracy. So we are going to download the data from this uh, GitHub. Again, there are, are a lot of uh, my right minor um, uh, tutorials on the GitHub and also on YouTube channels. So if you want to learn more about right minor, you can check my GitHub page and also um, uh, my YouTube channels. So we're going to use the house price data and we're going to load that data into right minor. And we're going to split the data into two parts. So remember that splitting data uh, it's a way that we can test whether or not our data overfit our, uh, our whether or not our model overfit our training data. So we we'll use seventy percent of data for training and also thirty percent data for testing. Of course, you can uh, change the ratio as you like, but normally we use more data for training and also less data for testing. And then we are going to establish a simple linear regression model to pr to predict the house prices based on the house areas. So there's only one in, uh, independent variable and also to predict the price. And then, and then we're going to report R square on the training data and also on the testing data. And finally, we're going to create a visualization that for the predict price and also the real price uh, through the testing data. Uh, so first, let's go to the GitHub, and here we're going to download the data. Okay, uh, so we can just save the data into my download folder, so that's fine. And next, uh, we open uh, right minor, so uh, we can close this welcome window. Uh, so we go to our existing repository for this class, and let's right click and create create a subfolder. So let's call it lab3. So this is where we are going to save all the process and also all the data. And next, we are going to load the data into right manner. So if you remember from our previous lab, the first lab, so we can use the read Excel file um, operator that is here. Um, you can search that here, or you can just import the data. So let's see, let's try import data. The data is now downloaded to my computer and also specifically to my download folder. Um, so that's okay, download folder and house price. And you now we can see an overview, preview of the of the data. So it looks like there's no missing data, etc. And next, so you can see that the Rec miner so automatically identify the data type. Okay, uh, so if you see some errors or if you see you need to clean the data, so you can just follow our second lab. You can go to Tableau, oh, sorry, the Rec miner Turbo Prep to clean the data. So now look, now the data is already cleaned actually. So let's just go ahead and uh, save the data. So let's save the data to our new folder, so lab three, and we can just name it house price. And next, we click the finish. So now we can have a very uh, quick view of our data. And so from here, you can open the uh, prep again to clean the data, or you can just uh, import the data to auto model to do the automatic machine learning, so which is great. And we'll see that option in the future labs. And you can see some very simple statistics. Uh, so here you can see that the minimal, maximal um, data, and also for the categorical data, you can see the the different values, and you can also open that one, and you can see a histogram for each single feature or each single um, variable. And from there, you can also create visualizations as we did in the previous lab, so to explore the data. Um, so here, our data is pretty simple, so we don't need to explore the data. So we are going to predict house price, 
and based on the size of the house. Okay, so based on the size of the house. Okay, uh, so let's go to go back to the design view and let's drag the data to our process. Okay, so because we are going to only we are going to only use the price feature and also the area feature. So we need to select the attributes. So we don't need the other attributes. So you can see at the bottom, you can see in the recommended operators, you can see the number one recommended operator is already the select attribute. So it's it's very nice that RefMiner provides some recommendations. Uh, if for some reason you don't see this window, so you may need to activate or enable the uh, intelligent wizard, something like that, and next you will see those uh, operator recommended operators. Or you can just simply search those operators. So let's say select. So you can see the select attributes is or is also there. So let's drag the select attributes. And now you can see for this parameter, it requires input. So we connect the output of the data and to the input of the select attribute. Um, and you can see on the parameter window. So here, do you want to select all the attribute or do you want to select the different attributes? So we see we want to select uh, a subset of the attribute. So here, based on the and they provide different options. So you can select single attribute, you can select a subset, and you can use you can even use regular expression to do the selection. So let's say I want to select a subset. And next I need to click this button and okay, so here those are all the attributes that are in this table. So what attribute do you want to select? So since we want the price of the house price. Uh, the price of the house and also area of the house. So we just select both. So the both attributes are now selected. And now if we connect the output to the result window, and now if we run it, we can now see that instead of seeing showing all the results in the previous one, so now we can only see those two columns or the two attributes, the price and also area. Okay, so. That's great. So that means uh, in the following models, we're going to only use uh, the price and also the area feature. OK, so that is like the attribute. And next is that we have to tell right miner that the the price is actually our target. So the price is one that we want to make pr prediction against. And uh, so you can see at the bottom, you can see Recommend already recommended the set rule operator, so which is the one that we're going to use. Again, if you don't see that one, you can also search set rule operator. Okay, so let's drag that one and let's drag that one directly, put that one to the link. So now you can see this is automatically be part of this process. Uh, however, we do have this escalation mark. That is because we haven't put any uh, um, thing that in this um, set row operator. Okay, uh, so here let's go to the parameters of this operator, and you can see here we now we can see recommender detected. Okay, right now you have two attributes. So how do you want to set the rules? So we want to see that for the price. Uh, the target row will be the label. Okay, so label is one that we want to make use as predictions. Okay, so label is the target row. Okay, and if you want to set more rows, you can just open this list and um, and you can set the rows for the other attributes. So for the price, it will be label, of, uh, and for the area, that is just a normal attribute that will be used as in the prediction. So. If now we look at the result, so now you can see the price is in the green color. That means it is in the uh, uh, it is uh, the label because it uh, it's a special attribute, and area still does not have any other other colors. 
And here you can see we have 41 examples. So that means we have 41 um, records of the house price that in our data. So uh, it is a very small uh, sample size. I would say it's a very small sample size. So um, ideally, it's not recommended for the machine learning model because it's too small. All right, so that is the set the role operator. So now we have set the rules. Um, the next is that so we want to split the data into two parts, so one for training and also one for testing. The reason we want to do that is that we want the training data to train the model, and also we want testing data, which the training the the the, the model haven't seen yet, to apply on the testing data, and because testing data has the right answers, so we can see that how the model will work on the data that the, the data the model never seen before. Uh, so let's say we want the split rules, so split data. Okay, so we say split the data. And you can choose the split type, you can leave the you can leave the automatic for now, but I do want to highlight there are also other ways that we can uh, uh, split the data. So you can aut use op automatic, uh, stratified, shuffled, linear, etc. Uh, so if you don't know what those mean, so I th they provide very nice um, explanations here. So linear, shuffling, stratified, uh, and also automatic. Okay. Uh, next, uh, let's add it that the uh, the portion, so the ratio. So, so we want to divide the data into two sets so that we want, uh, you know, so the ratio should be zero to one. So 70% for training and also 30% for testing. And now we click OK. So now you can see we have two uh, output. So the first one will be a data that is for training and also the second one if we look at both the second one will for the testing okay okay so if you put a mouse for the first dot you can see we have uh, 28 records in the first output so that is roughly 70 percent of the total data so that is for training um, we have 12 records, that is also 30% of the total data, that is for the testing. And if we run the process again, so you can see here we have 12 records, so that is for the testing data. And here we have uh, 29 records, that is for the training data. So remember that originally we have 41 records, uh, entire records. Okay, so this is for the training and this is for the testing. So remember that that first part is for training and also the second part is for testing. Uh, next, we can bring the model to the process. So in this case, we want simple linear re regression model. So if you type linear regression model, Okay, so linear regression model. So there's no simple linear regression model. So simple linear regression model is just one type of linear regression model. So it is called simple just when you have only one um, independent variable. So as always, the first output is for the training. So we, uh, we connect the training data to the linear regression model. Okay, so we connect the training data to a linear regression model, and you can see there will be three outputs. The first one is a model itself. So the, for the simple linear regressions, the model will be alpha and the beta, uh, or the intercept and also slope. The second one will be the extracted or the predicted data. So you will see the predicted result of the uh, simple linear regression models. The third one will be the weight, okay? Uh, so that generated by the model. So depending on the model that you selected, uh, the weight will be different. So we are not going to see the weight. So let's see. 
the predict model and also predict price. So let's now run the regression model and we still see here those other uh, result. And this is a model. Okay. Oh, sorry, this is not the predict result. This is just original result. Uh, and this is the model. So here we can see the uh, intercept and also coefficient, so that is beta for the area. And also we can see other uh, measures like standard errors, t-test, and also p-values. Okay. Uh, so if you go to descriptions, so that gives you the uh, expression of your model. So that is, um, this is beta multiple area plus alpha. So that equals a price. So that is a model. That is a prediction of your model. Okay. Um, so let's go back to design view. So sorry, this is not the predict data. So this is just simply the original data. So it's not the predict data. Okay, uh, so we know, okay, so that's the model that we generated, so that you learned from the uh, train from the training data by using the simple linear regression. Uh, we also have our uh, training data, so that is here. So next, if we want to make prediction, okay, so if we want apply the model, so how can we do that? So we can just simply choose the apply model here, or uh, if we can type apply model, okay, and we can choose that one from here, operator. So let's drag that one onto our process. Okay, and so now you can see it requires a model, so we link the model to the model, and it also require the data so we link the original data, the training data to the data. So now we apply the model to the training data itself. So we use our training data to find out the best parameters of the model. And now we apply the model to the training data itself. Uh, so now let's see how the prediction look like. And this will still be the, the model. So it will still be the same model. So the first uh, dot will give us a prediction. So now if we run the prediction, okay, so now you can see we have the prediction. Okay, so we have the second column that those are the predictions. The first column is the original process and the third column is area. So that is used to make those predictions. So, and still we have the same model. So that is the model. And now we have the predictions. All right. Uh, so next, so you may be wondering, okay, so now we have the predictions uh, from, uh, so that is a trained model applied on the training data set. So what is the performance of the model? So, I mean, is the accuracy very, very high, very, very high? So that's if the model has a very high R square. So we need to calculate uh, the performance of the model. So in this case, it will be R square for the linear, simple linear regressions. So here you can see, uh, now it's very nice that uh, the performance for the regression mode is already recommended. Or you can just simply search performance here. And now you can see there are different type of performance, performance operators for different uh, type of the models. So since here we are doing a regression model, so we can choose the performance for regression model. But if you are doing the other type of models, you can choose like for classification, etc. Uh, so here, let's say we draw, drag this one to our model. And for this one, it requires the predicted data. So we link the predict data from apply model. And next, we are going to report the performance. So the first dot will report the performance. The second dot will report, still report the predicted data. And also, when you select the performance operator, and if you go to the uh, 
parameters. Okay, and you can choose what performance do you want to report. So by default, the root mean R square errors is selected. However, the R square is not selected. So you can see R square, which here is called squared correlation. Uh, so let's select that one. Okay, and now let's run this one again. Okay, so here we now we have the predict price. All right, and here we have the performance. So this is our root R square root mean R square error. And if we go to um, uh, the R square correlation of the R square, you can see R square is very 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 low. Okay, so it's pretty low. Okay, uh, on the training data. So yeah, because we only have uh, very few um, data samples, so the 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 uh, the training data is uh, the the, perform the performance on the training data is very very low. All right. Uh, so if you see the process, so let's recap the process that, that we have done so far. So we import the data, um, and so we now we save the data into the right minor format, and we bring the right minor format data into our process. And we select the attributes that we want to use in the model. So we select price and also we select area. And we set the price as a target. So we set price as a label here. And next, we split, we split data into two parts. So the, the first part, the 70% will to train the model. And 30% will be the testing data that will test the performance of the, of the model later. Um, and here, once we have the model, so we apply the model to the training data itself. Okay, and we calculate the performance of the predict data, and we see that the prediction is pretty low. Okay, so that with we have done so far. Um, so next is that uh, we're going to use the model, the same model, so you can. Um, to apply the model on this testing data. So we want to see that whether or not um, the model did a similar performance on the testing data. So what we can do here is that uh, we can apply the model to the testing data. So you can either drag another apply model uh, from operator. Or what you can do is that you can start simply copy those two um, operator because we want to apply the model and also we want to calculate performance. You can simply copy and paste. Okay, so you can simply copy and paste. Okay, um, and now let's double click this one. So we want to change this one. So let's apply model for testing. And for this one, we just double click, and this one is for training. And this is performance for training. So you can see, you will see, uh, we will see the difference. Uh, you can also highlight that another note. So this is performance for testing. And then once we copy those parameters, so those settings. Once we copy those operators, those settings in the parameters has also been copied. So that's very nice. OK, uh, so now we also need to copy the model. So you see the model is here. So we can either drag the model uh, from linear regression model. So we'll drag another line to fit with the model. And now you can see we have this operator. So that means so now you are using the output in two operators. So right minor is asking that do you want to make a copy of that model? Uh, I would say yes. So I click this button. OK. So I click this button. So now you can see that. Uh, so let's move that one here so it might be clear. OK, so the model is now multiplied. So 
the model were first used for the training in applying model for the training data. And also the same model will be used to apply data for the testing data. OK. And next, let's link the training data, testing data to, to feed to the test operator. OK, uh, so let me drag it here. OK, and let's report the performance for the testing. And for this, so let's just compare the testing. So, OK, so let's just see the performance on the training and also performance on the testing. See if we have an overfit issue. So now if I run it. All right, so the performance for the training R squared is uh, very low. Um, performance for the testing, it is surprisingly high. <laughs> OK, uh, so yeah, that's by definition that is not overfitting. So if you remember the definition of overfitting is that the performance on training is very high and the performance on testing is very low. So by definition, it's not an overfitting issue. Uh, but it's still it's not a good. It's not good because the performance is not consistent. OK, the performance is not consistent. So if it's lower on the training but high on the testing, I still will not trust the model. So um, the main reason that we have this weird situation is because the total number of the records is still very low in this case. Remember, we only have 41 records, so the, the result can be totally random. So, uh, so we probably, you know, uh, uh, create, uh, selected some uh, noise records from the training and also perform that one to, uh, to the testing data. Okay, so. OK, so that's how we compare the difference uh, of the performance on the training data and also on the um, testing data. OK, uh, so now next, and so I'm kind of curious. So why is the data performed better on training data, uh, on testing data, but um, not doing a good job on the, training on the training data? Because normally, Generally speaking, the performance will be good on training data because that's how the data ha the model has been trained. So um, I think the best way is that we can visualize the result so that we can see that why the model did a relative good job on testing but um, bad job on training. So that's 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 very uh, rare and also that's that's very interesting. So again, so let's bring the predict result for the training and also for the testing back to our result. So let's first, let's look at the training data. So here we see the predict price and also the real price. And the best way to identify the patterns is go through the visualizations. So let's go to the visualization. And what I'm going to do is that I want to create a scat plot, uh, so which I already have. Uh, I want to see that how the model fit with our uh, the predict result fit with our data. So here you can see already I'm using I'm on the scat plot. So if you are not seeing a scat plot, you can just go to the plot type and choose scat plot. Uh, right now I have the area on the x axis and also price on the y axis, which is good. Uh, so if not, you can always go to here and you can select area as X. And also we click this button and also you can make sure that price is also here. And in addition to that, I also want to drag the prediction to that chart. So you, I move prediction to the chart and I hit apply. So here you can see the those blue dots uh, as the uh, original uh, data, so those are the real data, and also all the green dots which follow a straight line are the predict price. Okay, so if you want to see that more clear, you can add another plot. Uh, so let's say we want to add a line chart where x will be the area and y will be the predict price only. 
So y will be the predict price only. And let's change the dot uh, style to be dot. OK, point style to be dot. OK, so now you can see a more clear pattern. So because we're using linear regression model, so the model will assume that uh, the variables follow a linear relationship. So that's why all the predict data follow a straight line. And you can see that uh, for some points like this one, those two ones, the model did a pretty good job. So the error is pretty small. OK, and here. Um, and then generally speaking, the model is OK. But however, so if you notice here, OK, so we do have two outliers in the training model. And because of those two outliers, uh, the prediction uh, is not very good. OK, because of the two outliers in the training model, the prediction is, is very is is terrible. Now let's look at the prediction on the testing data. So now if I go back to testing and go to the visualization. And again, let's do the same thing. So we create a scatter plot. OK, and make sure that area is on the X axis and also the price and also predict price will be on the y axis or in this case it is called the value columns and let's apply okay and now you can see those green dots are the predict prices and we can also add one more straight line okay so let's add a line chart uh, where the x will be the area area and also the y will be the predict price only and let's choose the style to be dot as well so now you can see here um, that is a predict uh, prediction so they also follow a straight line um, and it did some good job on those points but generally it did an okay job i would say so so you can see here we can see a huge difference okay between the predict result and also the actual result and also for this point also a huge difference okay but but generally so this prediction is doing a far way bad job on this one because we see because of those two outliers so we have high performance on testing data and also low performance on the training data so that's why okay uh, so I think if you want to have a better result, so if you want to have performance on good on both data sample data, I would say that you need, I would, I would bring more samples. Okay, so because here, remember, we only have 41 records, that is very, very tiny, small sample size. So I would bring more samples. And for the lab, so you can just export this chart. Okay, so that is the visualization of the predictions on the testing data.